Hello everyone, welcome back to Sydney King channel and I'm so excited to be if you're actually excited to relocate, especially during this time, you know, people are a little bit cooped up in their nesty home and stuff like that. And it's so exciting to be maybe moving, vacation, or even finding a right place to live as well, or romance. But I want to specifically talk about romance in general. So that's a really exciting topic that we need to talk about, especially if you want to find love, maybe you want to relocate your office and space and why i got a great expert his name is ralph and i'm so excited to introduce you to him and he has such a wonderful product that i you gotta get a hand on of it Ralph, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about this conversation as well. Nothing like love to kind of part, spark my my attention. Yeah, of course. And so we're going to be talking about astral mapping, and that's really exciting to be talking about. Can you tell me a little bit more about astral mapping that you decided to create this beautiful product? Yeah, so there's there's different ways of taking your astrology and mapping it out on the world. One of the most popular ways made popular by Jim Lewis is called astrocartography. And then I've taken astrocartography and made it super useful and super available by putting it onto Google Maps. And the simple way of looking at it is depending on where you live on the earth, the astrology affects you differently. And the more complex way of looking at it, it's, it's a representation of your birth chart, which is a representation of your soul. Wow, that's really good. Um, how can somebody benefit with using astral map, like, you know, or astrophotography in general? What can they do about it? Well, the, one of the ways I like to talk to people about this is like, if you know the question, so the location you have has astrology that's asking certain things from you. And by knowing the question, it's much easier to answer it. rather than if you're just at an area and you don't know what the astrology is asking of you, the chances are that you're going to make choices in line with that are much more difficult. So it helps you understand, so to speak, the astrological weather of any location. And could be very beneficial to thriving, finding romance, and just having a good, healthy life. Yeah, and I noticed you had a video on your channel that talks about like the the bad lines. Well, there's no such thing as bad line, but there's transformation lines like the Pluto line, the Uranus line, the Neptune line. You know, what have you noticed in general in people's experience, and how they can take advantage of something like that? especially if they want to go on a vacation, should we go on a vacation on a Pluto line or should we head to Neptune or maybe Venus? I know birth chart is very customized and it depends on, you know, aspects and stuff like that. Can you can elaborate some of the cases that have you noticed? Yeah, so a lot of times people think astrology or astrocartography is like a panacea. And it's one of those kind of the old cliche, you know, the first person to show up wherever you go is always you. And so it's like your birth chart is yours for life. It's all the lessons that your soul's learning to live. And so any planet line on the map is showing that planet in your birth chart. And so you can't really avoid them. It's so like you can make the energy a little stronger, a little weaker. And depending on what you're looking to do, you know, if you're a Plutonian person and you're going on a vacation, say, with a mate, Pluto can be very exciting there. If you're not a Plutonian person, um, you know, sometimes it's wise to avoid Pluto. But yeah, Pluto can be a good line. So as far as vacations, it, it depends entirely on what you want out of the vacation. And also the, the way the chart is laid out and the way the planets aspected in your chart. Sun lines are generally pretty good. Um, Jupiter, Venus, Mars, if you're an active person, um, are generally pretty good for vacations. What about Uranus and Neptune? So Neptune is the connection to the divine. And 
it's it's kind of a dreamy energy. It can be all right for vacations, um, especially if you're a more spiritually oriented person. Um, you want to be careful around deception on Neptune. And Uranus is really wanting you to radically express yourself. And so depending on where you're going, so if you're going to a repressive country where let's say their, their views on people are different than where you're coming from, and there's a Uranian line there and you're an outspoken person, I would not go there. Because Uranus wants you to express yourself. And so when you go to a line, it's increasing the energy of that planet in your birth chart or in your life. Yeah, I have noticed I travel really close to uh, Uranus line. And what I experienced that I'm constantly moving. There is no like one spot. I will be probably in one hotel on one night and I'll be in a completely different city in another hotel, a different night. It's just a very erratic energy that I've noticed as well. So thank you for sharing that. Um, what about if somebody who really want to focus on love? And I know that you talk about uh, sun sign as well, which is kind of great in that way, because a lot of people are, a lot of astrologers are kind of like, you know, let's move away from sun sign astrology. But I think sometimes when sun is a really focused on the soul, can you express a little bit more about that? Yeah, the, the sun is the main energy of our solar system. So as above, so below. The sun, the reason why sun sign astrology is so popular is because the sun is such a powerful influence. It's kind of the main driving force between behind all of your chart. And so, but there's some interesting aspects to that because sun wants to be seen, wants to be strong, wants to be kind of be out there. And if you're a person who's wants to not be seen, you know, isn't comfortable kind of stepping into who you are, um, the sun energy can be a little challenging. It kind of is that friend that's constantly getting you to step up. Hey, come on, you're way, you're more than what you think you are. And so when you move to when you move or you travel to a sun astrocartography line, you're looking at the sun aspect in your birth chart and you're being asked to step up to it that's the question that line's asking you it's like are you stepping up into your solar power and if you're not wanting to then that sun energy is going to be a little bit challenging it's going to kind of constantly put you in situations yeah and is that is aspects of the sun makes a difference as well right if it's uh a sun that is aspected by a Saturn, you know, you might feel that a little bit more pronounced. So that's something you want to steer away. But if you want to like be seen and known and maybe focus on certain houses, because I know that you pointed that out when the sun is in the seventh house, right? You're going to be meeting more people. Can you elaborate a little bit more what kind of people that we might be meeting if we have a sun in the seventh house? relocate so, so if your son is in your seventh house either natally or by relocated chart um the seventh house is intimate connections with people one-on-one -on -one relationships with people it, it's like the house of marriage but it's more the house of like roommates marriage like who's doing what house how are we working it out how are we going to live together without killing each other so to speak um and so to have the sun there, the main energy of your birth chart really wants you to be focusing on the healthy balance between my needs and your needs. And so much of relationship is that balance, you know, and one aspect about this, especially with the sun, it, it depends on how you are utilizing that energy in your life. If you're utilizing any planet's energy in your life. So I have a Saturn sun square in my chart. And so my sun and my Saturn are tied together. So there's ways in which if I let that Saturn energy constrain me in a negative way or in my brain negative, it can be a challenge. But if I let that Saturn energy help focus me, it can be a benefit. And so by the way you utilize 
the energy in your birth chart. And this is what I help people in reading so much is really diving deep into helping you make choices that are in line with your astrology and getting the most out of it. Because a lot of times you'll hear astrologers, oh, you have a Sun-Saturn interaction. Oh, you're just going to be struggling your whole life. And it's like, that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is you can be focused. You can achieve greatness, you know, so. You're a yeah. responsible person. Yes. Yeah. Right. You, you can take care of the elder. You, you know, you oversee the vulnerabilities, you know, so you respect that. So yeah. I think that's um, a really clear message that you were saying. What about if somebody who really want to uh, find love specifically, how do they manifest that? Or should we just move on? Maybe talk about, I mean, let's, let's do solar return. That's uh, Varsapel. Um, so if you want to relocate, like, you know, every year we do a solar return and it's not in the greatest position. What have you noticed if somebody relocate maybe more to the East Coast or West Coast to change that during that time? How did that affect them or what have you noticed? Does it work or doesn't work based on, you know, using the map in general? Yeah, so that's a complicated question. And I'm going to try to break it down into some simple pieces. So every year, there's a chart called the solar return chart. And that kind of sets up the year. Now, you can change that by relocating. Now, depending on how you use it, a lot of astrologers want you to focus on the natal solar return chart as the main focus of the year. Now, but here's where the nuance, and this is where it gets a little more complicated. So, so often we live our lives for other people. And especially in relationships, especially when you were talking about Saturn and responsibility, this is where it's that balance, because on some level, Saturn will like crush you with responsibility. But if you kind of try to stay in a balance. And so the act of going somewhere on your birthday, the intention, setting the intention, hey, it's my birthday. I'm going to set my year up the way I want it. It's very powerful. And so by looking at the chart that you're going to, the location you're going to, and you want to not just focus on the chart. So for instance, I often pick on Afghanistan. I don't mean to, but it's like, it doesn't really matter how good your located chart in Afghanistan is. You may not like your birthday there, you know, just because of the nature, you know, if you're a warm blooded person, it's like, I don't care how good my astrology is in Alaska in the wintertime. You know, I like to be in shorts and flip flops, you know, it's not going to go over well, you know, so you have to kind of blend all of it together. But yeah, it's a very powerful technique. And, and if you're actually traveling, to me, it's more about setting the intention and putting yourself first. Super powerful. No, you made that very clear. And if, if you're a Vedic astrologer, uh, we have sorry, forgot to segue in the whole idea. It's tropical. So if you're doing sun sign astrology or birthday, you want to put it back to tropical. If you didn't know that, it's called Rachapelle. Um, I don't teach a course, but, you know, Ernst does, and you're more than welcome to connect and understand about, you know, solar returns and stuff like that. But that's the day of your birthday when the sun exactly meets your sun. So that yes. we call it the physical year. And that's the theme that's going to happen wherever the planet is. If you have a lot of 12th house factor, um, you know, a lot of planets in there, and you're just not a person that is into moksha or like being isolated, you want to be able to relocate during that time period. Um, an astrologer like Ralph himself can actually help you try to find a place that's not where there's issue in the country, maybe somewhere as flip flops and, and nice sand beach and, you know, beautiful men and women. And, you know, yeah. we're not, they're not restricted down. So I think that's really important to know that. So I would totally recommend if you are doing something that what about if I'm ready, like if I'm single, I'm ready to move, I want to find love, what should I do? Or where should I go? What line is the best? Should we go mm. our Mars line? Should we go in our Neptune line? <laughs> so 
yeah, the, we're, we're ratcheting up the complexity of the questions here. Um, oh, we are. <laughs> so I do a lot of work around this particular question. It's like probably the number one people reason why people call me looking for a location. It's like, where's my lover? Where can I find love? And as astrology and astrocartography is a very powerful resource, there's so much other aspects of it. And one of the aspects about it is, is like, who are you being when you're attracting the person? So if you are like this small little person when you're attracting your mate, but in reality, you're this giant person, it's like, you know, it's like you have to kind of be who you are to attract the right person. You know, and this concept of soulmate is such an interesting concept or, you know, partners. And it's like when you ask for your soulmates, you got to be careful what you're asking for, because soul level reality and physical level reality aren't necessarily lined up. So simply put, you want to go someplace where you feel alive and thriving. And if you go just, so to speak, for a mate, um, if you focus solely on that, on some levels, you're kind of missing the point. Because, you know, um, it's an interesting thing. You know, it's like people like to be wanted, but not chased. So if your energy is in this chasing mode, people run away, you know, versus if like, here I am, this is me, this is me doing me who I am, that's when you become the most attractive. And so by looking at a combination of different placements, so one of the things I like to look at is what's going on in your seventh and eighth house in your natal chart, understanding the planets in there, and then also so much of mating is karmic uh karmic there's so many karmic blocks and things going on when it comes to mating so working through some of that and that balance between self and other is a big one so if you're unable to really assert your own needs in relationship kind of be who you are and, and attract the people who want you um that's a big one um as far as lines are concerned, um, a lot of astrocartographers want to run towards the Venus line. And there's some positive aspects of Venus and some negative aspects of Venus. And if your discernment, if your ability to say no isn't up for the, uh, the task, Venus can be a very challenging line for you. Or like, for instance, I have Venus-Neptune opposition. So Venus and Neptune are connected, you know, I, I, I kind of run at love with my eyes closed, you know, and, and um, so me going to my Venus line isn't necessarily a good place for me, you know, versus, you know, my Mercury is a big planet in my chart, you know, it rules my communication, you know, it is kind of on some levels, the more attractive aspect of who I am. You know, so if I focus on who, what I really am and who I, who I want to attract and looking at the planet lines. So sun can be a good line. Mercury can, could be a good line. Um, Mars is very good. V Venus can be. Jupiter can be. Um, you know, I know people that have meet love, met love on, on their Saturn and Pluto lines. All the lines, there's not like one line that's good and one line that's bad. And you also have to look at the location. You know, once again, it's like, it doesn't matter how favorable your astrology is in a place like Afghanistan or whatnot, the, you know, or, you know, let's say you're a country person and, you know, we move you to New York City, or if you're a city person, we move you out to the country, you know, um, or if you're a particular political type or whatever, you know, it's like you kind of have to go shopping where there is the type of people you're looking for. Right. And you were mentioning the seventh and eighth house is a big factor when it comes to indicating that. Is that right? Yes. And then you also mentioned the great stuff. Are you open to speaking about negative uh, aspects that, you know, maybe this is something that you want to be cautioned about? 
um, certain lines or squares or whatever you were mentioning earlier? What have you noticed that's considered being painful for people in your client type of works? So one of the things that I find the most painful is people thinking that the opposite sex is looking for someone who they're, they're not and, and trying to be who they think they should be. Um, that tends to be the one, the most painful. So negative aspects in the chart, you know, so for instance, I have Neptune, Venus, you know, I have moon, Pluto square. So one side of the coin with that is a negative aspect. The other side of the coin is a powerful positive aspect. And by learning to utilize the different aspects in a positive way, not getting stuck in the, because the negative aspects, the way people talk about negative aspects, all of it is 100% true, but it's not the whole truth. You know, it's like there's ways of using it. So it's like when I figured out how to get into my moon Pluto in a way, it, it changed my whole life. You know, it, it brought me so much more attention because I took that negative aspect and turned it into a positive aspect of my life. So by utilizing the astrology in your chart, that's the best way to manifest what you're looking for. Now, with that said, certain things are easier and certain things are more difficult for your own nature. So understanding that and not torturing yourself. You know, if you're not a Saturn person, like I'm not a Saturn person, I, you know, don't want to move any closer to my Saturn line than I am, just because it's not my natural nature, you know. So depending on who you are, understanding who you are, and yeah. No, that's really good. That's a really good point because Saturn makes you alone, right? And it makes you work hard. Um, it can. Be very it committed. Very committed. It, yeah. Right. Um, so, and, you know, and there's a, there's a growth in there, right? So there's a lasting growth that happens. There's a harvest that needs to happen with Saturn, right? So it takes responsibility, like we were mentioning earlier. If you mentioned earlier um, in the few of your videos that if you're a type of person who needs to sit down and write and be in a one room and needs to get it work done, that is a good place to be in if your Saturn is supportive in that way. Do you kind of agree with that and notice those things as well? And maybe yeah. taking and family too, right? Taking care of family. Well, so so Saturn can be lonely, but that's not what Saturn really wants. Yeah. Saturn wants you to focus on achieving greatness. Yeah. Saturn wants you to focus on what's you, what's your responsibility, and what's not. And so this is where it gets really challenging with family because. A lot of times people's relationship with responsibility isn't balanced. It's very hard to get a balanced relationship. How much, you know, it's it's like, and depending on how many children, what society you come from, all of that can have an effect on your relationship with responsibility. And Saturn, the focus of Saturn in your chart is wanting you to achieve greatness in your life. And to achieve greatness, sometimes you need to be alone. Sometimes you need to be focused. Sometimes you need to moderate your responsibility. Sometimes responsibility helps you achieve greatness and sometimes it doesn't, you know? And so by not having a fatalistic view on any planet, you know, Saturn can be alone, but it doesn't have to be alone. You know, it's like on some levels, you know, Saturn will, if you use Saturn in a positive way in your life, it will make you more attractive because people are attracted to greatness. And if you achieve greatness, you, you become more attractive. I hope all the queens are, who are single are listening to this and find that a very attractive quality in a man. <laughs> so, and you no, know, you do mention quite a bit when it comes to like, 
understanding Pluto has a transformation in there and Pluto can be beneficial when we were working with it. If somebody in the psychology doing research, they want to be able to move into that line as a MC and as well as maybe your ascendant, but not so much in relationship. And how does that work in like somebody is in the field of um, psychic, would they would be moving in a Pluto line, working with clients that way, and that would be a good career line for them? Yeah, so it's interesting you say this, because in astrocartography, traditionally, astrologers pick on a few lines. Pluto's the number one that they all pick on. And, and when I first got into astrocartography, I was like, oh yeah, avoid the Pluto at all costs. But then I started to notice that certain people were thriving under their Pluto influence. And so I coined this term Pluto people. And, and it's like, depending on what you're doing, if you, if you're, because Pluto wants truth. Pluto wants you to be brutally honest with yourself, wants you to be brutally honest the way you look at the world. And so depending on who you're doing, what you do, um, Pluto can be very beneficial. So psychotherapist, anyone that's needing to see the truth behind people. Now, with that said, so astrology is the charts divided up into four angles. The ascendant is how people see you. The midheaven is your how you're presented out into the in the world is kind of your mission. The descendant is relationships with one and one and one-on-one relationships and the ic is the home and family so people are difficult all by themselves and pluto you know when when you dive into people with the plutonian aspect and i'm talking the descendant line pluto descendant line here's is exactly what i'm talking about right now it's like you don't need any help making people difficult. We, we, we're pretty, especially if you want to start to become in relationship, partnership, it's like you don't need any help. And it's like on some pl- levels, Pluto wants you to be honest. And on some levels, healthy relationship has a certain amount of learning what to ignore. You know, it's like, hey, I can either be right or I can be in love. I can either look at all the things that piss me off about you, or I can ignore that and realize it's like, hey, there's this long list of things that piss me off, but there's these few things that I really like that I don't want to let go. So I can either let go of what I want or let go of what I don't want. And so Pluto descendant line. Now, if you have Pluto on your seventh house natally, you live on a perpetual Pluto descendant line. And if you haven't moved from where you were born, you're living on that line. And you're learning how to integrate that energy in relationship. So I typically avoid Pluto descendant and Pluto IC because IC is how you nurture yourself, how you take care of yourself. And that's pretty difficult all by itself, you know, especially when you're relating to other people, you know. Um, versus Pluto on the ascendant is particularly good for therapists because when you have Pluto on this and it, people are like, I never tell anyone this, but for some reason I feel like I can trust you. And then Pluto on the mid heaven is uh, depending on what you do, a very powerful. I know a lot of people that are very, you know, psychics and astrologers and psychotherapists that thrive on Pluto Midheaven. Um, it's not for everyone though. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing that you stated that because, you know, for somebody who is a beginner in astrology um, or is in a different type of astrology, I just want to re-elaborate some of the stuff that he just mentioned. So he, when he says um, ascendant, that's uh, Rashi, that's your first house. And then I see it's your fourth house. That's how you feel home and safe. And then seventh house is that your descendant. That's your partner relationships or whoever you want to go in business with. And then MC is your 10th house. This is the highest point of your chart. 
So that's where the sun just hits the top of the crown of your head. Yes. So when we talk about Pluto and Pluto tends to be, you know, it could be intense. It could be drama, dramatic sometimes. There's sometimes it could be power struggles in between. But, you know, like you were mentioning, it's like, how can I keep this or what do I need to let go? Is it worth fighting for, right? Is it my point or being happy and being in love is really important. And I like the fact that you use the word I want because that is considered to be negotiable right and I, i'm a big believer on the whole concept about um not really being resentful in a relationship it's you accept the offer or you reject the offer right so there's never in between the line because the minute you're between the line you are tolerating and i big believer of not tolerating people you accept them who they are or you reject them in general so you're not in the power struggle of pluto and in, in, in any ways um, that being said, I know that you have a wonderful program and I love this. It's very much like I would call it between some things called Vasu and like Feng Shui. And it's like where you're sitting in your office. And if you want fulfillment and if you want clear mind, you know, I really like that. Can you tell me how, you know, how can we work with that energy? Yeah, so I, I, I have put astro cartography and there's several different systems onto google maps to make them very usable for people very easy to use and one of the systems that it's like astro cartography or astrology feng shui it's called local space and local space is really interesting so at the moment of your birth if you were to step outside and look at the planet in the sky the direction you're looking is that planet's direction wherever you are on the planet. And so I have this free map that actually you can get on my website, Astro Map Links, and it's the local space map. And it allows you to do this right on your phone. So you can zoom in right on your phone and you can just look at what direction you are facing in your house. So like when I set my desk up at my house, I try to face my mercury line because i speak for a living you know and the other aspect that a lot of people find this really fascinating is if you look at interactions in your life so when i first did this app my my desk was facing my mercury well I, as it turns out my ex-wife she was sitting on my mars line so I'm looking here, but my ask, and we never yell between offices, never, trust me. You know, my moon, moon uh, Mars, you know, I would never raise my, my voice. Um, but then the other thing that I noticed, it's like when we were to get into a conflict, it would be me facing my Mars line. And so, and I don't know how much of this is just astrology or me getting out of my own way, but I would just like pivot to be facing a different direction. So like, for instance, if you have issues at work, you know, if you come in and you see your boss and you're particularly standing in a particular way, you can look with this local space map to see what planet line you're lined up on. You know, if you're going out on a, a meeting, you can use it on a date, you can use it, you know, and it's like, if you, are finding conflict, then avoid certain lines. If you want romance or if you want easier going, focus on facing particular lines. So like Venus is a great line for, you know, romance, you know, finding, um, you know, but it's not a good line if you need to set boundaries. You know, Venus wants to get along. You know, Venus's idea of getting along is, yeah, that's just all right. And this is, you know, I, I was really liked what you said, Cindy, because so much of relationship is the dynamic that goes on inside your head. And it's like, it's so easy to point the finger at the other person. It's like, you're the problem. If only you could get it together. But in reality, if you take everything and realize it's like, no, I'm manifesting this. I said yes to this. So it's like, I can either say yes to the parts I like and be like, okay, I'm just going to accept this. It's like, once I decide to accept something, then 
I can't blame the other person, you know? And, and so much of relationship is learning how to kind of own your own response, you know? And don't let someone get, you know, don't let, don't give your power away to the other person. Well, I really like that because, you know, you gave me a thought and idea that, you know, I'm such a rebel Mars that I really going to change my desk during the middle of the exam and <laughs> facing the direction that I want to face, right? Because it's going to benefit me in an exam setting, right? So somebody can use something like that and try it out. Yeah, and totally. Because, you know, you, like you were saying, sometimes the way that we're sitting is not going to be in a great spot if you are working at home because a lot of people are working at home astrologers we've been working at home forever right that's that's not you right but if you're the person's like you know what i'm my energy and my head space is not clear and maybe you're sitting in your neptune line and you didn't know that so maybe switch it up in a different direction and see if that works because you know if that works for you great if it doesn't work for you you can always go back to your neptune line and (laughs) that makes sense to you but neptune lines are great if you're an artist right so um, don't get me wrong, n- not bashing any Neptune lines in general. It's a great, it's a great line to focus when you're meditating. Face yeah, face yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you want to meditate, exactly. If you want to meditate, you want to be artistic, you want to be free, you want to liberate yourself, this is a great line to be doing. But if you're like an accountant, you yeah. need to have a clear mind, very precise, detail, Virgo energy. You want to be sitting in that type of line or even close to Saturn to make sure that your focus is there yeah. and committed, right? To finish whatever, if it's bookkeeping, you don't like bookkeeping, you know, maybe find a line that really works for you in general. So I really like that. Um, have you noticed like setting up bedrooms? Does that make a difference in the house in general, like the using that map? It can, yeah, definitely can make make a difference. And and part of it's very subtle energies. We're talking very subtle energies. And then also it, part of it is setting the intention. So it's like when you set your bedroom up, if you're setting the intentions to evoke certain energies. And, you know, especially if you're partners, you have to kind of look at both charts and you have to look at the aspect of the, the, the planet you know, and, and, you know, it's like, and also don't, don't necessarily go in directions that you may think, you know, so like, you might think, oh, let me set it up for my Venus Mars, you know, and it's like, okay, there's, that's some great aspect, but the reality is communication, you know, it is is the key to all relationships. So it's like Moon and or Venus and Mars are very passionate. They're they kind of want what they want, you know. Versus, you know, Mercury, Moon, Sun, kind of will will help you kind of get along, so to speak, you know. And, and so much of that's key to to relationships. And then the other thing about that too is um. I know from the Vedic astrology, you guys call it slightly different, but the dragon head and tail, the north and south node, um, this is so key to relationships. It's so key to all of your chart by understanding and rulership. So every planet's sign has a ruler. So Taurus is ruled by Venus. So my north node is in Taurus. My Venus is in Taurus. So understanding now, so I mentioned two things. I have Venus opposed Neptune, which is somewhat challenging, but from an evolutionary astrologer perspective, the North Node is what you're learning. It's where you're, so to speak, dumb as dirt, you know? And so this whole Venus Taurus concept is something that's new to me. And so it's where you're going to make the most mistakes. So running towards lines that are associated with either your South Node, which were the karmic mistakes, or your North Node is where you're so to speak, the most ignorant, you have to be careful. And a lot of that, you know, a lot of times that's your personal planets. You know, if your North Node's in Leo or or Cancer or Aries or Taurus or Libra, it's all your personal planets. And so by, you know, it's like if you're a North Node in Leo or South Node in Leo, 
don't go running towards your sun line thinking it's just going to be some panacea because there's so much of the karmic aspects. And this is what I do. Most of the work I do in my readings is helping people unravel from the karmic implications that are keeping them from where they want to be. No, that's really good. And I thank you so much for uh, mentioning about the dragon head. And yes, so Vedic astrology, we focus on what we call it Rahu, and that's the dragon head that eats whatever it wants to eat. I've been taught that that's your jungle. So when you leave your house, that's your jungle. Anything can happen. And it's you can find diamonds, you can find snakes or scary things, or you can find wonderful things as well. That's Rahu. And then K2, it's the south node. And that's what the tail of the dragon. So it kind of walks around with no head. So wandering around and not too sure what's happening. So we call it the past. And we want to let go of those things because we want to work towards where the head is. What I have done um, in the past in my studies is, you know, I looked at like PTSDs and disassociation and I focus on Rahu and Ketu, the dragon of the head, because they are detached. So I have known as those things, you know, I have noticed things like even binge eating or overspending. That's all Rahu, over obsessing, over you know, doing things in that area. So that's what I have noticed. And thank you for mentioning that when it comes to either traveling or finding a mate, you want to make sure you're self-aware of these uh, nodes um they're just pointers and that's what you were saying and i understand that you don't have that in your in the map and because you really want to focus on the planets because that's the pointer of the planet if there's you know your venus is in rahu you want to focus on that venus so you know that maybe that's not a great line that you were mentioning earlier for yourself yeah well it's an area that i have to focus it's kind of like you're taking a class that you've never taken you have to study you know versus if it's just a normal planet it's like you have a normal interaction but for me this venus taurus is something you know i have to focus on it's like we were joking when we before we started recording because for me it's just like okay i got all these things i got to make sure that you know uh, I have together to to interact with the world from this Venus and Taurus. It's like, does it look good, so to speak, you know? And by understanding what's going on with your North and South node, and understanding where you have to kind of be extra careful is is a big is a big one. And then another, there's another map that I like and I have on my website, and so. So much of what we've been talking about is your natal placements, but there's other things called transit maps, or what I like, I give this away on my website too, it's under my library, it's the geodetic, current time geodetic map. And this is showing what's going on at your location from a transiting perspective. And so much of these maps, I, I made them, I put them on Google map before I realized really what was going to come from them. And so when I did this geodetic map, I just did it because I could. And then I started to notice that every time the moon transits through over my house, I was hearing the vacuum cleaner go. And, and, and it started to dawn on me. And then a lot of times with current, um, current things in the world line up with things on the map. So like um, quite often transiting Mars will be where violence happens. So a few years back when the, when the attack in uh, Paris around the, the cartoon people getting, you know, Mars was right over it. And it's very often, you know, it's like um, from an astrocartography perspective, quite often the president of the United States goes to war on their Mars line or has conflict on their Mars line. And so by looking at what's coming through, knowing what's happening, you know, can be a, a, a big one. You know, it's like, for instance, if you're in relationship and you know there's a bunch of Mars energy coming through, and, you, you know, if you're paying attention, you will be extra careful not to get into conflict. You know, it's like because if the way I like to talk about it is all these planets energies are like trucks, 
they're all moving. And you can either lay down in front of the truck, which I don't recommend. And when anyone's talking negative about astrology, they're typically passively laying down. It's like, come get me, Saturn. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that, especially with Mars or Pluto. Don't ever say, come get me, Pluto, because you never know. Versus like all trucks, you get behind the steering wheel. Now, you can't go wherever you want, but you're you're able to direct the energy. And this is what I was saying about knowing the question. So it's like, if you know what's going on at the location, you know where the truck's moving and you know where you don't want to be laying down. You know, if you're on a Pluto, if you have Pluto descendant, you know, in your birth chart, you have to kind of be focused on the subconscious aspect of relationship. You know, it's like, who are you bringing in? You know, how are you interacting with them? You know, are you constantly kind of throwing a monkey wrench in all your own relationships? You know, are you being too honest too quick? You know, and things like that. You know, are you not being honest enough ever? All these things that are going on in the subconscious all affect relationships. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was so insightful. And the reason why I say that, because the stuff that happens inside your house does affect energetically and through transit wise. And I have noticed this, uh, you know, when you purchase a home, you can cast a chart on that and you can see as well the transit that's happening in your house. So there's one time in one moment in my in my home right here that there was rats. I would, we were having rats manifesting everywhere in, in this area. And it was, you know, Rahu and K2. And I have noticed that because that's a rat and cat. And, you know, obviously Mars, if you see fires and stuff, that is definitely a Mars line as well. And so that's what I have noticed in general. So thank you for sharing that because I was like, yes, that makes a lot of sense, right? Like if your moon and the vacuums comes up and there's a lot of cleaning that happens. I want to know a little bit more about if somebody decided to book a session with you, how do you diagnose this from start to beginning? And just give us a little, maybe a brief understanding of like your, your analysis of how we go through or what you do in general. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of times astrologers read the birth chart. I read the person. I'm super, super, super sensitive and tuned. And so I use the chart to kind of help me see, ask questions. And then by listening to the answer, because it's your response to your birth chart. It's your life. It's your life circumstances. You know, it's like it was, you know, depending on the aspects in your chart, you know, it's like one person might thrive under those aspects and another person might suffer under those aspects. And by looking at the person and how they're interacting with the chart and then so much of what's going on in your life that you don't like is the is the subconscious. So uh, one way I like to describe this, is like, you know what's going on in your subconscious by all the things you bring into your life that aren't working for you. So, it, so often, especially with relationship, it's like, if you're having struggles in relationship, meaning either you can't find relationships or you find the same type of relationship, so much of that's subconscious, so much of that's karmic. And so by clearing that, by looking into that, you can really move past it and let go of it. And so th that's how I use astrology. I look at the chart and I read the person. So I look at what's going on in your chart and then by asking questions. And then also typically you can, if you listen to people, which I do, um, they'll tell you what's going on with them right away just in the in a few questions and then by looking at how their chart describes that and helping them understand it's like it's that truck analogy it's like people tell you where they're getting letting the truck run over them and so it's like hey get behind the wheel this is what the truck wants you to do and by changing slightly 
the way you interact with the planet's energy, um, there's big changes in your life. And so by tuning into what's going on in the person, looking at their astrology, and then helping them kind of see what aspects of their life is working and isn't working, you know, and so much of what I do is validate people's own inner intuition, you know, because a lot of times astrology and the people that are into astrology are the ones that don't fit into society as well. You know, it's like, um, and by explaining to people that no, they're not crazy, this is just who you are, you know, and allowing you to, to like fully own who you are, especially in relationship. So often, because I do a lot of work around this, so often it's about becoming who you are. You know, it's like, you know, especially for women, you know, society has this image of what a good relationship, you know, what being a good partner is. And, you know, if you're if you're supposed to be a super powerful, assertive, confident woman and you don't if you if you're not doing that, then you're going to attract the wrong people. And so by empowering people, helping them become more who they are then they can generally get more of what they want. That sounds so healing. Um, I really like that. And what I really like some of your uh, feature is the radius. You know, you can pick a section in um, the Google map, right? And then you can localize it and you can see the, you know, the circles, the few circles that kind of radiate outside of it, right? Um, my curiosity is like, how do we know how much of this energy is being affected if it's in the bigger circle, the 700 meters or like, you know, or the 50 miles, what does that look like? And what have you noticed in your experience based on radius of like touching a certain line and how much it's going to affect, affect it in general? Yeah. So the general rule of thumb. And so what we're talking about is the distance from the line. The, the circles tell you how many miles from the line you are. And so the closer you are to a line, the stronger it is. And now um, each line has a different orb of influence and a different strength. So the natal lines or the astrocartography lines are the direct representation of your birth chart. So if you were born with uh, sun on the ascendant rising in the east, you're going to be on a sun ascendant astrocartography line. Those are the strongest lines, and that's 700 miles. And so then the next line is the geodetic lines, and that's another representation. Those are about 250 miles, 300 miles between. If you're closer to, to the line than that, you're being influenced by it and so the stronger the line the, the nato lines you know are generally the strongest even if you're like close to a geodetic line but you're not as close to a nato line the nato lines typically are always going to be the strongest the geodetic are next and then the local space and and then the parent which is a crossing line that's the 50 miles. And those are generally fairly weak unless you're really almost right on top of them. And so the way I like to describe it to people is that always look at the natal lines first. And I have videos describing all this. I kind of walk through. Um, and actually, if you, want to, if you want information on astrology and astrocartography, my YouTube channel, I have tons of videos. I'm always putting out videos. Um, there's videos on all the different lines you can go to. Um, and all of what I'm talking about here is laid out in the videos too. And so the, the, the trick is, is that when you have multiple lines, um, so by looking at the natal lines, you understand the strongest influence of any location. Um, and then you turn on the other lines, help you understand some of the more uh, subtler influences. And then there's an interesting thing where if you, let's say, for instance, from where you live or where you're wanting to move, there's a sun line 100 miles away, and then there's a Neptune line 300 miles away. 
So for that Neptune energy to get to you, it has to come through the sun energy, you know, and, and that's much easier to deal with than if it was different. Let's say the Neptune energy was 100 miles away, and then the sun energy is 300 miles away. So it's like the, that for that sun to get to you, it has to go through the Neptune, which is much more difficult, much more, because Neptune is... Neptune's an interesting energy because it's 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 like being in a fog, you know. It's like the way I like to describe Neptune. It's like with your eyes open, you're blind. With your eyes closed, you're you can see clearly. And so this is a hard energy for people to understand because, you know, us as humans, we want to touch it. We want to, you know, especially if you're a scientist, it's like, hey. If I can't write it down and prove it, it doesn't exist. And it's like Neptune's all the things you can't write down, you can't prove, you know. It's like it's the feeling world. And so with Neptune, you you have to, so to speak, follow that intuition. You know, I always joke, it's like the little twink tingling of the toe. You know, when that right toe tingles, listen, you know, versus the sun energy is everything you can see. You know, it is the, the physical world. So depending on what line's closer, the other lines filter through it. Does that make sense? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, if I went yeah. Too no, no, that, that absolutely makes a lot of sense because, you know, you were mentioning about like being able to reach it and touch it. And I was thinking of like, that's the same thing in accounting. It's called goodwill as well, or like royalty fees, right? Or yeah. Um, even like doing finding molecules, like it's using sig figs of negative 10 and we have to figure out, prove it. Right. But we can't see it with our naked eye. We had to yeah. use all these special instrument to figure this all out. Right. So that kind of yeah. makes sense as well. You know, I want to slowly wrap this up and I want to thank you so much for doing yeah. this for uh, us in general. And I think you're doing such great work. And I totally will put everything down in the description um, down below. And that being said, what are you kind of working on right now for this year or in general manifesting within your business or what are you doing with your apps? We want to hear about some of the stuff that you're working behind the scene. So one of the things that I'm doing a lot of work right now in my business is karmic clearing readings, where I dive into the astrology and help people work through the karmic implications that are keeping them. And um, I have a couple products that I'm working on map wise. Um, I hesitate to say too much about them because they're I don't know if I'll get to them this year, but I'm working on a couple of products for businesses to where it helps you promote your business based on astrology. Um, and then another product that I have that I don't promote as much, it's called the transit and progression chart. And it really helps you with timing. Um, you know, so for instance, if you wanted to launch a product or if you wanted to launch, you know, a book or, or something like that, the transit and progression charts can really help you with timing. It's like the astro cartography map shows you where and the transit and progression mark shows charts show you when. Um, it's not for everyone. It's kind of a little bit more of an advanced technique, but it can be very powerful for timing of things. So I, I help businesses um, with advertising campaigns based off of it. And I'm working on automating a product that will allow that to happen. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad that you're so techie in this area, especially. And if you're a Vedic astrologer and you really like the deep dive of like wanting to know exactly the name of the street and exactly what city that you can be living on, I think it's a really great map for, for something like that. And you can have it customized just only for yourself. And that's really reasonable in general. I have used it myself. I plan trips. I figure out like if I'm in the right line, you know, somebody like myself, if I want to do transformation, I would go to Hawaii, but right now I don't think I want to be there. <laughs> 
But, you know, in general, you can plan things a little bit better. I really am grateful that you talk about progression and I use progression quite a bit about timing things in my life and making sure that I'm on track and set intentions like you were saying, but the planet is there to support you. There's a reason why there's, um, I think it was somebody like yourself that um, if you are a really big CEO person, you want to make sure that you're living in the right line and that you bring manifest station in this area right so I really recommend like if talk to Ralph about it he has an appointment I will list that all in the description so Ralph I want to thank you so much for sharing such a wonderful knowledge to my yeah. audience and doing such great work and I'm really rooting you on when it comes to manifesting and cultivating some of the stuff that you are bringing out uh, either this year or coming up years in general thank you thank you so much